Oh Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord. I give you glory. I give you praise. You are wonderful, God. Hallelujah. People of God. People of God, good evening. This is your servant, Pastor Joe Anochi. Coming to you live on Facebook on our usual program, Happy Marriage, where we equip, we empower, we energize, we recalibrate married couples for a good and a healthy marriage. So tonight, I want you to prepare your hearts as we come your way once again for a new episode where we will bring you an insightful knowledge where it will empower you to walk the marriage journey. Hallelujah. And I believe that tonight the Lord will speak to you. So prepare your hearts. Call someone to join us. Please may you share this video. May you give me a like. May you make your comment. Because tonight is your night of visitation. Therefore prepare your heart. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said. Where. There's no knowledge. My people perish. So knowledge is vital for your success in marriage. Hallelujah. Let's, let's commit the whole program to the hands of God. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We pray that, Lord, you will speak to our audience. Touch them. Anyone who is in a marriage, who is going through their challenges, I pray for divine intervention. I pray for your mighty hand to step in. I commit our single brothers. I commit our single sisters who are believing for marital doors. May you open it in the name of Jesus. We pray for marital grace. Help our people to, our sisters, our brothers to equip themselves so that they will enjoy the marriage, not to endure it. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, today I am continuing with a topic as, which I started about two weeks ago for dealing with singles. Hallelujah. I believe that prepare for marriage as single. Prepare for marriage as singles. And today I am dealing with a, sub, a subtitle, The qual Qualities to Develop as a single person before marriage. Qualities to develop as single before marriage. Hallelujah. So people of God, I believe that last week I, I started with this topic. I dealt with other qualities for you to, to inquire, for you, for you to acquire, for you to build yourself. Hallelujah. Bless you, Brother Kinsley. For, for you to get so that you will not be... A, a novice in the marriage because marriage is an institution because without knowledge you will end up perishing being frustrated suffocating in the marriage because there is lack of knowledge and lack of understanding hallelujah so as a as a single person as a couple even when you are in already there are certain qualities maybe you do not have the opportunity to acquire before entering into the marriage and you are in now and you are being frustrated or mar the marriage is going through your marriage is going through challenges but tonight I just want to bring you the truth so that this truth will help you to throw lights into your marriage so that you will, we will not walk in darkness in our marriages but we will walk in full light hallelujah because the bible says when light came darkness could not comprehend it hallelujah so as a child of god today i am i want to start by recapping about the, the things i dealt with last week i dealt with four qualities number one i i spoke about conquering insecurity building a secure life hallelujah conquering insecurity because insecurity will put a a, a a person in a state 
where he become over suspicious, where he become overprotective, where he becomes sometimes it can lead you to do certain things that naturally you have not prepared, you have not planned. Hallelujah. It becomes difficult for you to trust your spouse and you are not even secured when your spouse is relating to any other person. Hallelujah. So it is very important for you to build a, 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 a secure lifestyle so that you know who you are. You understand who you are. You understand your qualities as a child of God. Hallelujah. So, my and I dealt, I dealt with also getting rid of selfishness. Because when, as a single person, all of us started from the a, a, a state where we are all selfish, self-centered. Hallelujah. But when we want to take a journey of, of, of marriage, then we have to break out from our selfishness and our self-centeredness because you cannot move into marriage you cannot enjoy your marriage when you are selfish when you are self-centered hallelujah it is very crucial for us to get rid of self selfishness hallelujah and and the other thing that i i dealt with was learning how to build commitments because marriage is commitment. If you're a single person, you don't build this quality. Understanding that you need commitment to remain in the marriage. Because marriage is a platform where there's so much demand and pressure. So if you are not committed to the cause, any little thing you want to run out, any, little, any challenge you want to give up, Hallelujah. So a single person, you, we need to build the, 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 the quality, the, the tenacity, the power to be committed to the cause of the marriage that you are, you are going to engage in this. Hallelujah. And as a thing, if you don't build it before you enter into the marriage, it will surface out. You find that you are, you are so uncommitted in, any, in your marriage. Hallelujah. So as, a, as, a, as a, a child of God, as a single sister, as a single brother, you need to build a quality of commitment, stickability. Stick to it till things get better. Stick, work through. Believe God. Press on. Hallelujah. The Bible says for this cause, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one. There is a cause. Understand that there is a cause before you, you will enter into the marriage. You don't enter into marriage based on necessity, based on assumption, based on pressure. You need to understand that there is a divine purpose. There is a divine cause. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, when you are able to get this before you enter into the marriage, it helps you to, to develop a, a tisking, to develop the, the stamina, to hang in until things get better. Hallelujah. The last thing I dealt with was developing a positive attitude. Attitude is everything. Your attitude will determine your altitude. Hallelujah. Your attitude can be a repellent or it can be a compelling force that will draw or repel or compel things, good things or negative towards you. Hallelujah. So it is very important as children, as a, as a couple, as a single person to build a positive attitude. Hallelujah. I dealt this last week, but uh, today I am continuing about the, the qualities to develop as a single before you enter into marriage. Hallelujah. I just want to read a scripture. Hallelujah. Where we, we will stand on it and build. Because people of God, marriage is not a joke. Marriage is not a joke. Because a lot of time we all want to get into marriage. We want to get, we want to be a husband. We want to be a wife. But do we have the necessary skills? Do we have the necessary knowledge? Do we have the necessary qualities? Have we empowered ourselves? Have we built ourselves? Because they said proper preparation will pre prevent poor performance. The five Ps, proper preparation prevent 
poor performance. When you are able to develop yourself and when the door of marriage opens, you'll be ready to function as a husband as a good wife, as a good husband, hallelujah. So it is vital as child of God to know this, hallelujah. When you read the book of Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter, let me read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. The Bible says, trust in the law with all your heart, lead not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil it it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones hallelujah people of god the bible says in the first place marriage is an a god's idea so if you want to prepare yourself, if you want to build a solid marriage, if you want to build a happy marriage, if you want to build a healthy marriage, God is your, 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 your foundation. Hallelujah. When you take God out of, out of the equation, automatically you, you open yourself up for all kind of de demonic and satanic attacks. Hallelujah. But after you have put God in, into the factor, you also have to acquire the necessary knowledge, the necessary wisdom, the necessary understanding how things work, hallelujah, how women behave, how men behave, so that you will not become a novice when you enter into the marriage. Because once you enter into marriage, most of the time we don't have the time to prepare because our emotions will be so high our feelings will be so high our expectation will be so high so we don't have the room to do to to develop ourselves so the best time for you as a couple as a as a young man as a young lady is to prepare yourself while you are in the stage of your singlehood because singlehood is a stage in your life hallelujah and every stage in your life you need to know what to do so that when the time comes, you'll be able to perform. Hallelujah. When you read the book of Proverbs chapter 4, the Bible, chapter 4, the Bible said, verse, verse 5, it said, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Hallelujah. Therefore, get wisdom. In all your getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. Hallelujah. People of God, the the, the, God, the word of God is admonishing us, hallelujah, that we need to get wisdom, we need to get understanding. We under, understanding is how things work. Everything has this, the, a, a principle or a system, how it works, hallelujah. Things don't just happen. Happy marriage doesn't just happen by waiting and hoping. It is something that we need to deliberate do it. It is cause and effect. What you do is what you get. Hallelujah. So as, as a single person, as a, as a young man, as a young woman, as a, a mature um, a lady, as a matured man, Maybe you you went in for the first time. You didn't have that no this knowledge, so things went um, went bad, and the marriage has collapsed. God is still a God of second chance. No, I'm not here to 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 advocate for divorce, but I'm here to tell you that if it has hit you, that is not the end of your life. God is a merciful God, but people of God, you cannot go in for the second time 
in ignorance. You cannot go in for the second time with lack of knowledge because when there is lack of knowledge, automatically you will perish. You will not perish by demonic forces. You will not perish by witches. You will not perish by the work of, 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 of wicked, uh, wicked spirits, but you will perish because you lack knowledge. Hallelujah. You lack wisdom in, in, in the area of marriage. You lack understanding in the area of marriage. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, it is very important. The Bible said, the word of God said, get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Hallelujah. Do not forsake wisdom. She will preserve you. You will not die. You will not have depression. You will not face broken hearts. You will not. You will not go through unnecessary frustration. Why? Because you have acquired the necessary wisdom concerning the marriage that you are believing God for. Hallelujah. So people of God, it is very important and it is very expedient as children of God to build, to get wisdom. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get it. Hallelujah. And in all your getting, get understanding. Standing. Know how women operate. I always tell men, women operate like the police. They, they always will tell you, you have a right to remain silent. Whatever you say will be used against you at the court of law. Because women never forget about anything, whether positive or negative. So as a man, you need to know what you are saying to a lady. Hallelujah. Because they always open a file for you. So when you say anything, they put it on your file. And it will take a long time. It becomes like a, like a, your credit score. It will take more than six years for it to be... To, 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 to be wiped off from your credit score. Hallelujah. So as men, you need to have this wisdom. Whatever you give to a woman, she will give it back in multiple form to you. Hallelujah. You give a, a, a lady, a woman, a sperm, she will give you a baby back. That is the same way they, they, they operate. So the Bible says, get wisdom, get understanding, know how, how they work, know how they operate, how they behave, how they, 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 they are... Uh, primary expectation, hallelujah, understand their makeup, know that they are emotional beings, hallelujah, and, and so all this thing helps you, it, why, because it is wisdom, today I, I am continuing with, a, with, a, with, a, with these qualities, they are wisdom, they are key, they are tools that will help you to build a solid marriage, they will help you to function in the, in the marriage as a husband or as a wife. Hallelujah. You, as I said, you don't need to get in before you get this quality. You prepare yourself before you get into the marriage. Hallelujah. Because once you get in, man, woman, sister, you will not, sometimes we will not be merciful on one another. We, uh, we will be expecting so much from you. And that is where most of that we get disappointed, we get discouraged, we, our hopes are dashed against the rock, and we, we come to a point that we ask ourselves, but why am I in this marriage? Hallelujah. So people, it is vital. Today I am I, I will continue with, with, the, with the first key, the first quality that I will talk about is developing life skills. Hallelujah. Developing life skills. People of God, life skill is, is so crucial. We have academic knowledge and we have life skills. Some, a lot of people have, they can have academic knowledge, but they lack life skills. Hallelujah. Life skills is, is a great key. You, that one it, that's what in other content they will call it the street wise. Hallelujah. They call it um, in, in, in either dialect, they call it a fianza in tree. They will call it a fianza. So, life skill is something that is crucial because life skill will help you to sustain your marriage when you enter into that marriage. Hallelujah. When you lack, you like, you lack life skills. 
you can be beautiful, you can be um, gorgeous and whatever, but it can easily go against your marriage. Hallelujah. Number one, I will tell you, said, life and marriage is a complex institution that comes with, with a lot of demand. Hallelujah. Marriage comes with a lot of demand. It comes with pressure. It comes because when you marry to your spouse, when you enter into marriage, you have not married only your spouse. You have married the, the family members, your in-laws, your, your spouse friends. Um, they, are, they are so, they are external, external factors and stakeholders who are also part of the marriage. So if you don't have life skills, how to deal with your, your in-laws, how to treat them, how to handle them, how to handle your 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 your, your spouse acquaintances, their his friends, hallelujah, how to handle your his business associates, hallelujah. All these things, how to be hospitable when even you have a visitor or a someone, these are all skills that we need to acquire. You cannot, we cannot come to a, 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 a moment that we say, I am, it's me and my husband alone, me and my wife alone. Hallelujah. We need to build the capacity to handle our marry our, our, in laws, our friend, um, uh, friends from our, our spouses, his or her acquaintances, colleagues, business associates, hallelujah. These are the things that we need to learn because most of the time, if you mistreat them, if you are so arrogant, if you, you, are, you, you are just rude towards them. They can, they can influence your marriage negatively because when people start saying negative things about you to your spouse, if your spouse is not a very highly matured person, the tendency for him or her to be influenced by the same of the in-laws and the friends and the acquaintances. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, as a lady, as a young man, you need to acquire these life skills, how to relate to them, how to live with them, how to handle them. Hallelujah. You don't get too close. You don't get too upstate. Uh, um, you don't stay too far. Distance. You don't distance yourself, but you need to strike the balance. Number two, under, under developing life skills, you need to study human management, how to relate. Because a lot of people, a lot of, as a single, if you don't build human management, because human beings are very complex. Hallelujah. If you want to enter into marriage, you need to learn human management. You need to learn how to relate. Hallelujah. You cannot be self-centered and then think that you can function best in, in marriage if you don't understand human management. Hallelujah. You need to understand temperamental differences. You need to understand cultural differences. You need to understand dif uh, personality differences. Hallelujah. You need to Understand all gender differences, how genders work, hallelujah. Men are rational beings. Ladies are emotional beings. You need to understand all this so that you know how to handle things. When a woman says that is okay, most of the time it is not okay. They are sending another signal to you. And as a young man, you need to understand that when a woman says it's okay, she's communicating to you differently. And when you take it, it is okay. That is, you 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 will answer with, uh, with, with thesis. Hallelujah. Why? Because you don't understand. We don't have knowledge how they Genders operate, hallelujah. So as a child of God, you need to build a quality where you will learn 
life skills. Hallelujah. The next thing that you need to build as a child of God, as a, as a, young, as a young lady, as a young man, is to build character. Before you enter into marriage, you, we need to build character. Hallelujah. Character and integrity. These are vital keys for a happy marriage. Because if you, you want to enter into marriage and you don't have character, you don't have integrity, my brother, my sister, you will have a lot of challenge and automatically the, the marriage will not survive. Hallelujah. Because when, there, when there's lack of integrity, when there's lack of, of, of character, frustration is inevitable. Hallelujah. Because your no will not be your no. Neither will your yes be your yes. Hallelujah. You say one thing and you will do another thing. Hallelujah. Why? Because you have not taken time to build your character. Because Charisma will take you to the top, but character needs you to need to sustain you. Charisma will will take you into the marriage, but character needs to sustain you in the marriage. <laughs> it, it, the Bible said when when you read the book of John chapter four, John chapter four, Jesus had an encounter with the with a Samaritan woman, John chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, the Bible said, Jesus asked the Samaritan woman, this, this was a lady, the Bible said, she has married five times. Hallelujah. Five good times. Let me read it. John, Gospel according to St. John chapter Chapter 14, hallelujah, chapter 16. I read. Jesus said to her, Go to your to go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you you now have is not your husband. In that you have spoken truly. Hallelujah. People of God, this is a woman who have the charisma to catch, to, to get a husband, but she does not have the character to sustain the marriage. So what, you ask yourself, why was some a woman divorced five times, and even the sixth one too, it, 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 it just it just uh, uh, just hanging in. Hallelujah! So it shows you that character is so vital. If you are even in marriage already, and we we are struggling in this area, it is very crucial. It is very important to understand that I need to build my character. I need to build my integrity. Hallelujah! Because as I said, I repeat, charisma will get you a spouse, but your character can easily destroy the marriage if character is not is not developed. Hallelujah. In second, integrity is vital in building trust in your marriage. Integrity. Hallelujah. Because if you don't have one, it becomes difficult. The Bible said, those who, according to Psalm 125, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. When you have integrity, your, your spouse will trust you. And with, when there is no integrity, it becomes difficult for your husband, your wife, to trust you. And when trust is lacking in the, in the marriage, you become like a, 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 a city without walls. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. It means that when your husband or your wife trusts you, 
she or he become like Mount Zion, who become unmovable, who can put her neck down for you because she know that you are you are a man of integrity. You are a woman of integrity. She can trust you blindly. Why? Because you have been tested and you have you have passed your test. You what you say is what they, 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 they see. Hallelujah. You don't say one thing and they will see another thing. So as a, as, a, as a single man, as a single woman, for you to sustain when you enter into marriage, you need character. You need integrity. And this thing, you have to build it. It will not come, come naturally. It is something that you need to develop yourself. You need to acquire it. You need to pray. You need to allow yourself to die so that you'll be ready to, to, to exhibit the, the integrity that when no one is there, when no one is watching you, you will do what is right. When your wife is not around, you will not start chatting with other women. When your husband is not around, you will not start chatting with your former boyfriend. Integrity. Hallelujah. You, when he said, I am done, now is my time to get into this marriage, you go in and you make sure that you, dis, you cut down unnecessary ties. Otherwise, you are, in, you are one foot in and one foot out. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, it is so important, so crucial for you to build because no successful marriage is built without integrity and character. A lot of marriages have crashed because the, one of the spouse lack integrity. When, 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 when you pick up their phone, you will find so much skeletons on the phone. Can you, and you, because when man, you lack integrity, you always put locks on your phone. Because if you, are, you have integrity, you, you have nothing to fear. When your wife is not around, when your husband is, is not around, you are, you, you are the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forevermore. When you are being watched, you do the right thing. When you are not being watched, you do the right thing. That is integrity. Hallelujah. It's a great quality. We are living in a time that integrity is becoming like an ancient word. And that is why marriages cannot try. But for us, as a young man, as a young lady, build integrity before you get into it. Hallelujah. Don't, because when you go in with lack of integrity, with lack of character, it will just be a matter of time. It will catch up on you. Hallelujah. It will catch up on you. So as, as, as a young man, as a young lady, don't play with your life. Don't, don't joke with your life. Start building. Start acquiring. Start developing. Start reading books. Start listening to, to, to tapes. Start listening to, 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 to CDs. Start going to, to um, YouTube. Listen to things that will shape you, that will build you. Because when you don't build, you will not have the foundation that will, that will be able to sustain the demand that marriage brings. And, for, and character is one of the major foundations that you need in your life for you to enjoy a happy marriage. Hallelujah. The, ne the, the next thing for you, for you also to do, to learn, is to learn how to take up responsibility. People of God, Winston Churchill said, if you cannot carry the ball, you cannot lead. It means that if you cannot take up responsibility, you cannot lead your family. You cannot be a manager of your home. Hallelujah. Responsibility is a key. Be willing to pay what you are supposed to pay. Hallelujah. Be willing to accept 
responsibility even when you make mistakes when things go wrong hallelujah you cannot shake up your and start blaming others because most of the time when we make mistakes we try to blame others we try to tell we try to look for someone to blame hallelujah that means that we don't we don't accept our responsibility we are human beings sometimes you make mistakes but as a as a man who is matured who or woman who is matured that want to enter into marriage has to be able to accept his shortcoming accept his fault accept when things go wrong said honey i will i think i will have made mistake i blew it myself I did not do it intentionally, but I accept all my, did my responsibility. And I am ready to make it up for you. Hallelujah. When a man or a woman is able to accept their responsibility, when things go wrong, then that is when they, they, their spouse are able to start working with them because they know that they are not going to play a blame game. Hallelujah. Secondly, responsibility. As a young man, you need to build it before you enter. When you get of age, learn how to rent your own place. When you know that you are you are about to get married, when you are trusting God for marriage, when you are trust, you need to start learning how to handle. Even when you are staying home with your mom, with your parents, learn how to contribute into the running of the home. If you are working, don't use all your money to start buying Versace, Gucci, Nikes, and all these things, and just check off responsibility. No, you have to start learning because if you don't learn it from home, when you get out there, you start struggling. Hallelujah. Responsibility. The Bible said that when, when Eliezer was sent by Abraham, according to Genesis 24, to look for a wife for Isaac, the Bible said the, the, the lady that came to, to, to the well was Rebecca. The Bible said Rebecca was carrying her pitch at her shoulders. It shows you that Rebecca was a responsible woman, a young lady who was ready to work, who was ready to take a, 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 the house domestic work. Hallelujah. Who was able to, to, who was so hospitable. The Bible said when Rebecca was asked to give just a water, a water for, to Eliezer to drink, Rebecca had, she, she herself decided that, okay, after giving you water to drink, let me also water your camels. Hallelujah. This is serious responsibility because this is a man with, you, with a lot of camel. But because Rebecca was able to water the whole garden, she carried the responsibility. The Bible said after she finished, the first thing that Eliezer asked, take me to your your father, because I've seen, I prayed, and I've seen the sign that you are a woman who takes up responsibility. Hallelujah. And that was where Rebecca was taken as a wife for Isaac, and Rebecca intended to inherit all the blessings of Abraham, the father-in-law. Responsibility. People of God. We are living in a time that especially in, in Europe here, in America, a lot of a lot of men did not learn to handle responsibilities. So when they come to Europe, they start sharing bills with their wives. They start they start they start shaking off their responsibility. They start fighting with their wives on their on, on child benefit, on child support. People of God, as a husband, you need to know that what if you want to marry. If you are planning to get into marriage, then you have to learn that you, if you are going to, as a man, if you are going to give your name, you're going to name your children after your surname, then you have to be ready to take up the responsibility. Paying school fees, paying rent, 
paying mortgages, working hard for the family. It is what? Responsibilities. Hallelujah. When you study Ruth, the Bible says Ruth came to Bethlehem because she was ready to be a responsible woman. She found herself working. She was doing something with her life. She was even taking care of the mother-in-law who was a widow. And, and through working, through taking up a responsibility, she found herself in the fields of Boaz. And that was where Boaz reco recognized Ruth and acknowledged her. And from that time, the whole process became a history. It was through responsibility because uh, sometimes people are looking for people who take up responsibility, but not people who become a liability, people who become a, 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 a weight on them, hallelujah, but people who are ready to, to, work, to, to work with him or her. <laughs> The next thing that I, I want to talk about is discover and know your assignment. Discover and know your assignment. As a, as, a, as a young man, as a young lady, if you don't know your assignment in life, if you don't know what God has called you to do, you will, you, you will connect yourself with, with anyone. And you, once you discover your assignment as a child of God, it helps you to know those that, you, that can become a potential wife or a potential husband because you will know and discover that this is, the, this is my direction. This is my vision. This is my primary assignment. This is where I am going. So if I am going to the north, then I need someone who is also going to the north so that together we can work together. We can encourage one another. We can support one another. We can assist one another to get to our, our final destination. Hallelujah. You will not go and take some, someone who is going to the south. Because you you will frustrate yourself, you you will be miserable, you be you be you be undermined, you will be fighting. Why? Because you want to change the person' cause, and the person also will want to change your cause. Then that is where the struggle comes in. So discover and know your assignment in life is very key. Don't wait till you enter into the marriage before. Um, try to figure out what is my assignment in life. You have to know it while you are single. So that when men or women approach you or you approach them, you can, you, it will help you to know that this person, I think she will be a, a best candidate for me or for, uh, for, for us to build a life together because after conversation and talking and dialoguing and praying, I've seen that this person is going this way. So together we can go. Hallelujah. People of God, it is very important. If you don't know your life assignment, if you don't know your, your, your life purpose, Anybody that comes in, you think he, he is the prince, prince charming. He he is the is your is your is your Romeo and Juliet. Hallelujah! You need to know your assignment. Number two, you need to have a clear vision, a clear vision, because the Bible says where there is no vision, my people are constrained. You need to have a clear vision because if you have a clear vision, you can communicate with your spouse before you even get into the marriage so that you know that my vision can blend with your vision so that together we can build something to the glory of God. Number, number three, you have, to have, you have to know your purpose. Purpose is the reason of your existence. Purpose, you don't, you don't think that your marriage should bring you purpose. You have to have purpose before 
you, you enter into marriage. And if you are in already and you have not entered, you need grace. You need to pray for God to show you your purpose so that you know, because when you know your purpose, woman, my sister, my brother, it becomes difficult for you to be jealous. If you know your purpose, it becomes difficult for you to be envy. If you know your purpose, it becomes difficult for you to, to start running people's race. Hallelujah. If you know that you are you are a, 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 a hundred meter runner, you don't jealous someone who is going for long distance. Because you know that you are a sprinter, you go for hundred meters. If you know that you are a marathon runner, you will not never jealous. A hundred meter runner. Why? Because your purpose will give you the grace. Your purpose will give you the resource. Your purpose will give you all that you need. So for you to enter into a successful marriage, you need to know your divine purpose. Hallelujah. The next thing that I will talk about is you have to know your negotiables and your non-negotiables. You have to know it. There are things in your life that you are ready to negotiate. You are ready to compromise. And there are things in your life that you know that this thing is my non-negotiable. I cannot stand it. I, can, I, I, I can't handle it. You have to know it. And because if you don't know it and you enter into certain relationships, and you yourself, you know that these things, I, I don't even know what I cannot stand. But you have to know. If you are, if you are a, child, a believer, and you know that if, um, my, for me, if the person that I want to marry is not a, a believer, that, this place is non-negotiable. <laughs> that is the beginning of everything. You have to be a believer before I can even start praying about you. Hallelujah. And so, you have to know your negotiables and your non-negotiables. The thing that is no, no. And the thing that you are, you are ready to, to, to work around it. You are ready to compromise. You are ready to, to work with your spouse. You are ready to change so that it can suit your, your spouse. Hallelujah. And there are certain things you know that this thing, when I, 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 I hear it, when I see it, I get, I get totally disgusted and I cannot stand it. You have to know. Otherwise, you find yourself being miserable and you, you, I didn't know that this is and then before you realize, you pack yourself and you leave the marriage. But you, you need to understand, once you make, your, you make a mistake and enter into the marriage, when you are coming out, you are coming out with bruises. When you are coming out, you will come out with serious wounds, deep, deep-seated wounds. So know yourself, know your negotiables, know your, 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 your non-negotiables, so that you will be able to make a wise decision when the time comes for you to make a choice as you, in, in, in the journey of marriage so that you will be able to, make, to, to take a life partner. Hallelujah. The next thing that I will talk about, because I'll be finishing this, and next week I will be dealing with how to choose a life partner. Hallelujah. The, the next thing is to, step, you need to study about marriage. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. Marital illiteracy is the key for, for, for major divorces. If you, what you don't know will exclude you. What you don't know will frustrate you. What you don't know will eliminate you. What you don't know can easily kill you. You need to study about marriage. You need to learn about the opposites. And their behavior. If you are a lady, you need to learn about men. Don't sit down and think that, oh, I know I know men. No, you have no clue how men behave, the, how their ego be their ego works. You need and you need to know. Thank God for technology. Now, when you go to Google, 
You can have every information. When you come to Facebook, you can follow me. We are teaching you when you, there's so much materials, but are we taking time to study? If we don't study, if we don't know, you would think that the man is trouble. You would think that the woman is too emotional. <laughs> and for your information, every woman is emotional. Every woman. Because they are emotional being. And as a young man, you need to understand. You need to understand marriage. You need to understand the opposite sex. When wom women never forget. And whenever the, anything that it, it has happened, when you bring the matter up again, they will talk about it that it just happened. Why? Because they, they always put information in their subconscious, freeze it, and it, it, it remains fresh. Whenever they bring it up and it all, it becomes fresh. That is how they operate. So as a man, if you don't understand, you get frustrated. So you need, we need, to understand when a woman speak loosely against the, the 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 career of a man you have touched the man you have touched his personality because men their 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 work and their personality work together that is why when a man loses his job as a as a wife as a woman you need to start with him you need to encourage him you need to be sensitive how you talk to him because at that time, your husband will be going through serial challenges. So you need to encourage him. So as a single, you need to learn all this quality before you enter into the marriage. You don't go and start telling him, and you see your you just you see that all your friends are working, you are staying home and this and that and that and people of God, you will crush him without no knowing. So as a child of God, you need to know. How does men behave? How does men operate? How, men don't talk through their problems. They think through their problems. Women don't think through their problems. They talk through their problems. So you need to understand the differences. Because women, if you don't, as a man, if you don't give them the listening ear, to listen. Sometimes they just want to talk. You, they don't need answers. They don't need solution. They just want you to listen. After talking, 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 they, before you realize, they have, they will get, they have their own solution. All that they want is to listen to them. Sometimes they will just want you to embrace them, hug them, show them love, not to have sex, but just embrace them. But men, when a woman wants to embrace them, we think sex. But sometimes it's not about sex. It's about just embracing. Let her feel you. That let her feel that affection, that love. Women, they, 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 they thrive on love, on affection. And men, they, we thrive on respect. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, you need to know this difference. When you disrespect a man, you are, you are communicating to him that you don't love him. That is how we interpret disrespect. So before you get in, you need to understand all this, this, but how can you understand it if we are, if you don't take time to, to imbibe knowledge? Hallelujah. Steady. Steady marriage. Steady and know that marriage is a work. Know that marriage is not, it will not happen by chance. A good marriage does not happen by chance. A good marriage is something that you need to deliberate to work on it. You need to roll up your, your sleeves and be ready to dirty your hands and work on it. Hallelujah. How can you work on it if you don't have knowledge? How can, because something you can have good intention, but because you don't have the necessary skill, you don't have the necessary knowledge, you can crush it. Steady about marriage. Hallelujah. The next thing that we need to understand is to learn how to be abound and abase. Be willing to start small. 
as a young as a as a young couple as a young man as a young lady be willing to start small don't sit there with fantasies be willing to start small be be willing to embrace people with potential hallelujah have have a mind of a builder and be ready to work if you want already made already made husband already made wife when you meet already made wife you will not fit in because when you are willing to to work with with her because you accept small beginnings you develop along along the way you are the, the person is also developing you are also developing why because you'll be able to be merciful to one another but if you are not willing to start small and now you want a big man who has made it and uh, who has his money you want everyone with that have 10 cars 20 cars have houses you go in you become part of his property be willing to start small hallelujah be a man, be a builder, build something so that you'll be proud of yourself. You will see that we started with, we started, our, our beginning was small, but our latter end has become great. Next thing that, the last thing that I will talk about is to have the spirit of humility. The Bible said, humility is before honor. When you don't build the, the humble spirit, you become arrogant, you become so proud, you become pompous, it becomes difficult for anyone to relate with you. Why? Because you think that you know it all. You will not, you, you will not develop a teachable spirit. Hallelujah. A teachable spirit. You, you have to build the spirit of humility. The Bible says, according to Ephesians 5 verse 21, the Bible says, humble yourself unto one another. Humble yourself unto one another. Why? Because he said, according to, submit to one another in the fear of God. Humble yourself. Humility is before honor. The Bible says, I will resist the proud. But I will lift the humble up. So when you humble yourself, I tell you that you, you become everyone accept you. Your husband will accept you. Your wife will accept you. They will know that you, you, even though you have your, short, your shortcoming, you are humble enough to learn. Hallelujah. Spirit of humility. Today I pray. As a young, as a as a couple, as a young, as a young man, maybe you are courting, maybe you are you are you have a fiancé, maybe you are not praying, maybe you are not believing God, maybe you are you are not developing yourself. But today I want to tell you that build these qualities, build yourself. Don't don't think that you can survive. Without these qualities. And the last thing that I'll talk about is to build a prayer life. Pray. The Bible says houses and riches are from a father, but a prudent wife is of the Lord. That means that not every woman is a wife. The Bible says, he who finds a wife has found a good thing and obtained the favor of God. That means that not every lady is a wife. So you need, if, you need to find it. And how can you find it? Through seeking the face of God, praying for God to order your steps. And as a man too, the Bible says, for, for a lady, the Bible says, for this cause, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one. So you need to pray for God to give you a man, not a boy. Because a lot of ladies have married to boys. And they are frustrating them. Why? Because boys are not committed. Boys don't have integrity. 
Most of the boys don't, don't they don't build character. Boys always want to play. Boys want to, to, to eat their cake and still have it. Boys don't get married. Boys go for girlfriends, but men go for wives. That is why the Bible says, for this cause, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Boys will always, after you make a decision, they will consult their mom and they will, their mom will change it. After you have made a decision, and make a decision with your husband, he will consult his friends and they will change it. After you are, you are, why? Because the, the, the guy is still a boy. You need a man. Because men are ready to take up responsibility. Men are ready to sacrifice. Men are ready to pay the price. Men are ready to build character, to show integrity. Hallelujah. Why? Because they are ready. When you go in for, for boys, even when you are pregnant, they will tell you with who? Hmm. When you are pregnant, they will become angry. But when you, you, you look for a man, they are always ready. They are always ready to stand with you. They are always ready to sacrifice. They are always ready to show you love, to show you, to, to show you affection, to show you respect. When you are not there, they will do the right thing. When you are there, they will do the right thing. Why? Because they believe in integrity. They believe in, in, in commitment. They are committed to the cause. Pray. Seek the face of God. Let God lead you. The Bible said when Eliezer was, was, was Isaac had gotten to an age where he needed a wife, Eliezer went and he prayed. According to Genesis 24, he said, God, as I've come to look for a wife for my, my, myself, my master Isaac, may you lead me. And the Bible said God led him. People of God, pray. Pray for marital grace. Marriage is not easy. You need grace. Because grace will make things easy for you. Grace will make things that naturally you cannot handle, you will handle it. Grace and favor will help you. Will open doors that naturally you cannot open. The Bible says Esther found grace in the sight of, of Haggai who was preparing Esther uh, to, to, to showcase Esther to the king. Because of grace and favor, Esther was received more provincial services. They give her, they gave her extra preparation, extra grooming, so that she will, she will appear before the king and then the rest became history. So when Esther came before the, the, the king, the heart of the king was stirred up. And the king put the crown on, on Esther's heart, head. And Esther became a queen. People of God, you need the favor of God. It is not sometimes, it is not only about beauty. It's about the favor of God. So you need to start praying. God lead me. God guide me so that I will not fall into the hand of any Delilah. God lead me so that I will not fall into the hand of any, any, any Abimelech. God lead me. And when you start praying, God will start leading you. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Acknowledge God in prayer. In worship, in seeking the face of God, study the word of God so that you will know what God is saying. Be sensitive to the spirit of God. So, because marriage is not just an ordinary thing. It's one of the, the major decisions that you will ever make in your life. Marriage can make you or, or make you. Marriage can, can make you look beautiful or marriage can deteriorate you. But 
if we are able to pray, we are able to build ourselves, we are able to build these qualities, you will find out that when the time comes and the door of marriage is open unto you, you will go in and you will perform. And the glory and the grace of God will come upon the marriage. You operate it with marital grace. Where others are crying, you'll be laughing. Where others are complaining, you'll be, you'll be celebrating. Where others are murmuring, you'll be praising God. Because you did your homework before you enter. You did not wait. You not become like, a, like, the, like the, the, the foolish virgins who did not have enough oil. That when the door opened, they didn't have the oil to enter. They start operating in darkness. I pray that you will not operate in darkness. You will operate with light. You will operate with these qualities. Hallelujah. Building, building a secured life. Hallelujah. Get rid of selfishness. Learn how to build commitment. Be, develop positive attitude. Develop life skill. Build character and integrity. Learn how to take up your responsibility. Learn how to manage money. Learn how to, how to, how to manage your home. Hallelujah. Discover and know your assignment in life. Know the, your negotiables and your non-negotiables. Study about marriage. Don't be ignorant. Don't be Ill, a, a marital illiterate. Be marital literate. Learn how to be, uh, how to abound and how to abase. Learn to be humble and develop a, 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 a prayer life. Because for you to get, I always say, confess. And if you are not careful, if you don't have discernment, you go and take any action. Because when God wanted to give Adam a wife, the Bible said, God asked Adam, among the animals, have you found your partner? And Adam said, no. And that is where, uh, that is where God created Eve for Adam. I pray that God grant you the grace, the wisdom, the power to develop yourself. If you are in the marriage already and things are not working, I pray for grace. I pray for favor. I pray for the hand of God to be upon you. I pray that God will meet you at the point of your need. I pray that whatever, anywhere you are struggling, may God strengthen you in the name of Jesus. I pray that may God build your... your to be a woman of security, a man of a man who is secure. I pray may you may you not be a self-centered person, but be a selfless person in the name of Jesus. Father, I commit my sisters and my brothers in the name of Jesus. I pray that Lord you will show you order their show them what to do. Grant them the grace to develop, to grow, to learn what they need to learn before the door of marriage is open. And if they are in the marriage and they are lacking any, this, any of these qualities and it's affecting their marriage, Father, by the power of the blood, by divine authority, according to your word, may you grant them the grace, may you grant them the strength to build it, that Lord, their marriage will be turned around. They will enjoy their marriage, but they will not endure it. I pray for marital grace. I pray for divine wisdom, divine knowledge, divine understanding. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the spirit of unity. Any disunity in their marriage, Lord, I turn it around in the name of Jesus. Let your glory descend upon them. Favor their cause, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray for anyone who is trusting God as a, as a young man, as a young lady. I pray for doors of marriage to open unto you. In the name of Jesus, even in this pandemic, may the Lord order your steps to find yourself in the field of Boaz. 
May the Lord lead you. As God led Eliezer to find a wife for Isaac, may God lead you. May you be found as a woman, as a lady. I rebuke every spirit of delay. I pray that, Lord, may the hand of God that came upon Elijah to outrun the chariots of Ahab, may this hand come upon you and give you speed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. People of God, I believe that today I am com I have concluded this for pre preparing for a quality life before you enter into the marriage. I pray that you will build it, you take it serious and run with it. And that's when you enter, you have the quality, you have the power, you have the knowledge, you have the grace to perform as a good husband and as a good wife. I pray that may you continue to trust God and to believe him. Keep praying. Keep trusting him. For he who has begun a good work in your life is still faithful to bring it to a perfect completion. In Jesus' mighty name. This is your servant, Pastor Joe Anoche, who have come to you live on Facebook. Please may you share this. Send it to someone. Share it. Forward it to someone. A singer who you are trusting God. You are your sister, your brother, your friend. And as a, even a married couple, you can pick certain things and use it and build your marriage again. Don't endure it, but enjoy it. Till we, we meet again next week, the same time, the same place. God bless you, wife, Mrs. Anochi. God bless you, Sister Joanne. Joanna, God bless you, Brother Boatin. Hallelujah. God bless you, Brother Ben. God bless you, Sister um, Conina. God bless you, Sister Ephia. God bless you, Sister Killen. Um, sister Himachua, God bless you, Brother Kinsley. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Rubin. God bless you, Naomi. God bless you, Sister Kuya Sewa. And God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Mavis. And so God bless you. All of you, everyone that could not see, God richly bless you for being with me. I believe that your life has been imparted. And your life and your marriage will never remain the same. Shalom, peace to you. To we meet also on Friday on Taking Authority, 1030 UK time. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Spirits, I thank you, Lord. I give you.